Hey there, it's Tom here from Our House Plants, and today we have a care video for the Philodendron Silver Sword, otherwise known as the Philodendron Hasatum. Okay, so this is the Philodendron Silver Sword. It's a little bit different to most Philodendrons, potentially, maybe, it depends. Um, I think it's an interesting house plant. It does have quite specific growing conditions to an extent, which I'll get onto shortly, but on the whole, it's quite easy, it's quite straightforward. I feel like if you're dabbling, if you want to put your toe in the water of maybe a bit more of a jungly type house plant, this is the one you want to go for. It's a great first start. Um, it's really easy going, it's quite forgiving. Like I said, it does have some specific needs in terms of its what you need to provide for it to grow at its best, but they're quite easy to provide and it's not particularly difficult. And the plant generally is really easy going. Um, a few mistakes here and there, it's gonna be fine. You're not gonna have any problems. So like I said, I think this is a great house plant to get stuck into if you wanna go for a bit more of a jungle vibe in your home. Um, yeah, I would say this is probably one of the top five first picks. And even if you are quite experienced and you know what you're doing, this is still a great choice. Um, it's really unusual. The leaves are silvery blue. Um, the colour to me reminds me a bit of the sea blue, blue pothos. Um, it's got the same kind of silvery sheen and it's hard to see in photos and videos. I'm hoping it shows up. I will show extra footage so you can have a close up and see what's going on. But yeah, the leaves are really interesting. Um, so it, it's a jungly vibe because of the shape of the leaves, but also the colour as well. It just makes it a little bit different to, again, more normal house plants. So it fits into, you know, most homes and stuff in terms of the vibe that you're going for. Yeah, so let's go into the care and I'll tell you what you need to do and I'll talk about some of the quirks and what needs to be provided as we go. I pull it down because it's a bit awkward to hold and a bit heavy, so this is a bit easier. Okay, let's talk about light. Um, most phil philodendrons are easy going with light, relatively speaking. I would say true for this plant as well. Um, it does probably need a little bit more light though for growth and for to keep them maintain the colours of the leaves. They don't fade out as such, they don't disappear, but they're more vibrant if the light levels are quite good. So you probably need quite a, a bright location. Um, it can cope with a little bit of full sun. Um, it can cope with some slightly darker locations. Medium light levels are the lowest I would go. I, I wouldn't risk going any lower. I did have my this originally grown in a lower light position when I first got it. Nah, it didn't grow really at all, so I don't recommend that. Medium at the very least, and ideally go for a bright location, but not intense sun, but a little bit, a splash of sun early in the morning or late evening is perfect, to be honest. So um, water it well, wait till it dries out, water it again. It's that simple. Um, yeah, okay, fine, maybe not quite that simple, but it is straightforward. Um, water it well, and then wait until the potting mix has either partly dried out or completely. Um, maybe the first couple of inches, once the first couple of inches of the potting medium have dried, water it then. Um, but you can also just wait until it's completely dried out. And that's what I've done on this plant on occasion. Maybe not intentionally. Um, sometimes it's easy to sort of forget about it. Where it's located, I sort of sometimes forget that it's there. But honestly, the worst that's happened is it's slightly curly leaves, curling, curling leaves, sorry. And it kind of droops a little bit and sort of just hangs down. Um... A bit like a peace lily, a tiny bit like a peace lily, but not a huge amount, just ever so slightly. It just droops a little bit and then it's time to water and it's fine. There's been no problems from doing that. Overwatering does need to be avoided, so don't overwater it. Um, definitely, definitely avoid that because they don't like it. They don't like too much water, but underwatering is, you know, kind of okay, but don't overwater. That's definitely a no. Humidity has never been a problem for me. I have this plant, not I have, this, this plant has not a single brown tip, none, not one anywhere. So the humidity levels have never been a problem with it. It's okay. Uh, it's quite adaptable. I imagine that will be the case for most homes. My humidity level ranges from 45 at some point of the year. Uh, it gets a bit higher in the winter, um, possibly 60, 70 some days, which is quite but um, it's fine. So the higher levels are no problems at all. You never have to worry about that. It's a tropical plant. It, it will not be phased by high humidity, but lower levels may push it slightly. But like I said, 45 for me, and there was no issues. So 
most people are going to be okay. They're going to fall in that range. If you have lower humidity levels than 45% and you notice there are the usual indications of problems like brown tips or brown edges, you may need to find ways to boost the humidity levels, but otherwise it's fine. Feeding, let's talk about feeding quick. Yep, you probably do need to feed these houseplants a reasonable amount. They're not usually hungry, you don't need to go crazy with it, but once a month, maybe once every two months is probably what you should be going for. Um, some houseplants hardly ever need feeding and they are absolutely fine. These do need some feed. Um, the leaves are quite large. Um, I will show you some photos um, and they get big. You can see it in the, the camera, hopefully anyway, but they are quite large, so you do need to provide feed to keep them going. Um, it's straightforward. Um, temperatures. Yep, again, tropical plants, they like it warm, but they will also be okay with more average conditions as well. Just don't expect them to grow a great deal if the temperature are, the temperatures are cooler. But you want a daytime temperature somewhere between 15 degrees to 35 degrees. So it's quite a broad range. That's how well it is Fahrenheit. Um, yeah, I find that if the temp in the winter, for example, even if I provide grow lights, it, it doesn't grow, it stops. And it's because it's, it's too cold. I can't sort of provide that temperature naturally. Um, so yeah, warm temperatures will get more growth, but if you but it's fine down to about 15, it's okay. It don't, I wouldn't go any lower than that. Philodendrons generally don't like it particularly cold. So 15 is probably the lowest I would go for. And let's now talk about problems. Yes, because there are problems potentially with this plant. So let me talk about problems. Um, pest problems, I have had thrips. They're a big problem. They're a big issue. Um, they almost destroyed this plant. Um, it's bad. Thrips are bad. So look out for thrips. If you start to see yellow leaves and you know you have not overwatered it, look for thrips. Um, I'll show you some photos of signs that you may have a thrip problem. Um, not guarantee, there could be other causes, but they're the telltale signs. If you see any of these things, study the leaves carefully. Look for thrips. And if you have them, you need to treat them. You need to treat them fast and urgently. I would isolate the plant from all your other, other plants in your collections, keep them away and treat them. Don't mess around, just get rid of them because thrips can literally finish off house plants quite easily. They will destroy them. A lot of pests can be annoying and you can see them and they're just irritating, but thrips can be seriously devastating. So if you see them, you need to get rid of them quick. Yeah, so other than thrips, um, I've had no other pest pressures, no other pests at all. And to be honest, no other real major problems, um, except for maybe one. But this ties in with my next topic I want to cover, which is the drawback of these houseplants. Okay, so with philodendrons, you can get various different types. Some of them are trailing, which means you could have them, say, hanging up on a shelf. Um, Mycans in Brazil, they're, they're wonderful trailing philodendrons and they cascade, they hang down, they're really nice. This one, no, the silver sword is not a trailing philodendron. If you allow it to trail, it just will not grow properly. Um, the leaves don't get bigger, they look not like they're supposed to. It's called silver sword because the leaves kind of have a sword-like look to them. You don't get that if you allow it to trail. You need to provide climbing support and probably like a moss stick or a moss pole, a, co um, a totem, whatever you want to call it. You need something for the aerial roots to grip into and climb. It needs to climb basically. As soon as it's climbing, the leaves get bigger, um, the plant is happier and it gets taller and it just grows. So it does need that support. If you can't provide the support, you're not gonna reach its full potential. So that I would say is the drawback with these plants. Um, some people don't want taller houseplants. They want them to be compact or hanging down from somewhere. This, this isn't probably suitable for you if that's what you're planning to go for. Don't get me wrong. Um, you can grow them, grow them like that for a little while, definitely. Um, but if you're looking for something like this, if you want to see these massive leaves, you won't get it unless you can provide that climate support. So, right. So I think I'm done. Um, as in every single one of my videos, I practically always say, or even the comments or whatever, if you've got any questions, please just ask me below and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, 
it's hard for me to think of what else to say about this house plan because it is so straightforward. Um, I'm desperately trying to wrap my brains now. Is anything more pertinent? It's something that you need to know, but no, I think we've covered the essentials. Climbing support, yes. Um, watering, don't overwater, but do provide a decent amount. They do need it, but not excessive. They need feed. Humidity is not a problem. Temperatures, warm temperature and light. Good, le good levels of light means good growth. And they will get bigger and they look great. And they are fantastic houseplants. If you're looking for that kind of jungle aesthetic, that is so popular right now. Um, but yeah, let me know anything else and I will see you in the next video.